Now, so this is the mothership right here. That's your mothership, your blog. And these Facebook and Twitter and other things like LinkedIn and YouTube and all those other social media are called outposts. Now, they're called outposts because they are satellites like moons to the mothership, which is your blog. In this case, it's your blog. It could be your website, but right now we're saying it's your blog. So all of those things exist to feed inbound users into your blog piece. So when you think about it is, you're gonna write a blog piece that is going to, you're writing a blog piece that is going to these places. And these places are listening to a whole lot of other people. There are a lot of people are following over here. And that's a good thing. And what you want these people to do is to read your new blog piece on each of these things. And you want them to click on it and then they come back to your blog. But it's not just that. You can also set up Twitter and Facebook to update each other. You can write a tweet which will also be posted on your Facebook page. You can write a Facebook status on your page that will also come and update your Twitter feed. So those two can be connected and these can all be connected. So it's all connected. And it's even more, this isn't just a one-way connection from your blog out to Twitter. You can pull in the RSS feed using a widget, the RSS widget, in your sidebar. You can pull in your Twitter feed and you can pull in your Facebook sta status, news feed, your, your status. So this thing can be, you add in here YouTube, LinkedIn, and all sorts of other stuff. It gets really good. So those are all ways that you can, you can create this incredible sort of, you know, world of social media, this optimized, optimized social media presence. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, you know, a few reasons. By increasing your web footprint out there, you're everywhere. And what that does is it, um, it increases your chances of people finding you. And if once they find you, they're going to go look at what you're producing. And let's say it's a great blog piece because you're an amazing writer. Your grammar was good. Your blog actually looked good. You had paragraphs and bold, bold chapter heads, lots of links, links to everything you're talking about. You should just be linking to everything you're talking about. Photos that you have the right to use or, 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 uh, or other images. And they're going to come to that content and go, wow, this is really great. And your whole goal is to get them to click follow at the top of your blog. You want them to follow you, which means it'll pull your blog into their RSS feed, their reader, whatever it is, perhaps a Google reader. So that's called inbound. Those are inbound people coming inbound. You want that inbound traffic. And so by the more people you start building up, the more people who start lis you know, listening and reading to you, following you, all of this kind of stuff, you can actually post your stats. Like, for example, you can have a like button with, a, with numbers that you can actually do. That. We're going to talk about that another time, but uh, you know, on, on analytics and stuff like that. But when people see how many people are following you, it gives you a lot of street cred. All of a sudden, it's like, Wow, I want to follow this person. So the more people who start following you and liking you and all that junk, the more credible you are as an expert at whatever the hell you're talking about. So you want to start getting those, those numbers up there. The more people following you, the more easily you will be followed. But of course, you need to be, you know, the more, the more people you will, you know, the more subscribers you get, the more followers you get, the more uh, likes you'll get, the more all that junk. In order to keep that happening and growing, though, you have to consistently produce good content. You can't blog once a blue, every blue moon or once a month, sometimes even just once a week. You want to write your blog all the time. And it's got to be good to keep people coming back. Like, oh my god, this is so amazing. So be good. 
I've, I know I beat that to death, but I'm telling you, I want you to succeed. You know, whether it's a business or journalism or just your own personal brand for just so if you just want to get a job and you want people to notice how amazing you are, be amazing. And be patient too, because as I said, it takes once you get a lot of numbers, it's easier to, to really, you know, get more numbers. But at the beginning, it's slow and it's tough and it's, you have to be consistent and really, really do what you can to expand your, uh, your, your network. And so, um, for example, when you first get started, you're going to want to, you know, when you first, for example, when you first connect your, your Facebook page to your, to your blog, that's going to come up on your Facebook page. First of all, when you create the page, it'll be immediately announced on your real on your own personal newsfeed that you have created this page on a certain topic. That that alone might get people over there going, "I wonder what that's about," and they'll start liking it because they like you. You can also actually create, you know, post statuses on your Facebook page about the fact that you just created this new page and you're going to start getting into this stuff and oh my god, please come and like me and start asking your friends and family to share your new page with their friends and so on and so on. Don't be bashful. Ask your friends and family to do that. Go up to people in the street and grab them by the collar and just say, follow my Facebook page, you know, whatever you got to do, but be nice about it. So you have to be patient about this. You can't just sort of um, expect immediate amazing results overnight. But you know, the trick is be consistent. And remember that you're building a community. In all of these different places, you want to really make sure that you're engaging your public, engaging your customers, engaging your readers, and they respect you. There's more likelihood that they're going to want to share your, what you're doing with their friends. Like, this person's awesome, so cool, you got to check him out, oh my god, you know, and do that. Um, and it also makes you, you as a brand, or if it's a product you're selling, or if, it's a, if you tell journalism stories about something, or if whatever it is, it makes, it gives, it's sort of brand recognition. The more, the bigger your footprint out there, the more often that you are constantly putting content into that area, into that social media uh, environment, the more brand recognition you're going to have. Uh, it's just, you know, when they, when, you know, when people see your, your logo coming up on your Twitter feed all the time, they're going to start recognizing it and going, you know, this guy's usually pretty good or this woman's pretty good, and they're going to click on it. I'm, I'm of, of the army, of the, of the, you know, argument not to change your Twitter um, picture because it's, it becomes a, a logo, an icon of who you are. If you change it all the time, people are going to go, Who's that again? They're, they're not seeing your name, they're just seeing your picture. So think about that. So anyway, those, that's sort of the sphere of all of this stuff connecting. And I want you to start doing that this week. Connect your Facebook, Twitter, and um, blog all together so that the blog is going out to them. Twitter and Facebook are both connecting this way. I want you to link both of them this way. and. There will be tutorials on how to do that. So anyway, good luck, you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.